What's up YouTube? So today, um, there's a new program, recall, whatever you want to call it, um, out from Ford. It's called the 19K03 um, Sync Reprogramming Recall. Um, in this particular video, this is a MyTouch system. This is not a Sync 3. Um, a lot of times people are, what's the difference? Well, first of all, MyTouch um, has the four corners. You know, you got your phone corner, um, you got your audio corner, you got your climate control corner, and up here you got your navigation corner. Um, anyways, bottom line is the Sync 3 um, is more of a swipe. You can swipe it to the left, swipe it to the right. To it's like more like a phone. This is just pretty much touch screen stuff. So, anyways, I'm doing this video. Uh, I've been the sync guy in my dealer forever. And since this recall has come out, um, we got a lot of new guys doing this update or going to attempt to start doing these updates. So, I'm just gonna make this video short and sweet as best I can, kind of help my fellow Ford technicians. Um, know how to at least update the my touch uh, slightly different procedure than the sync 3 and then obviously the non touch screen sync 2's it's a little bit different I don't know if those are actually um, part of this recall anyways this is my touch system uh, you're gonna need this little interface cable here it will have a couple different um, ends on it. I'm going to show those to you. I have to turn my flashlight on. Hang on. So for the My Touch, you have a interface cable that has a regular USB that goes to the computer. Then you have another female USB that's actually going to go to the USB connection on the back of the media hub. Also, you're going to need a 8 gigabyte um, thumb drive. You should go in and format this drive to FAT32. That way it's all clean and the very first one you do it's going to take a while to load the software um, but after the software is loaded up on this uh, the next time around it will just basically go in there and I don't know it sets it up to install on the next vehicle so the actual main part of the download will be there and then it'll do something else to it to, for the new vehicle. Anyways, um, so you're going to need to locate your media hub. That's the media hub. Pull the cover. Get a little pick so that you can slide the media hub out. And this little cable right here is the one that goes to the USBs. You're going to try to do this one-handed. Pop that out. And that's going to end up being a little mini male USB end to connect to the female USB end of your interface cable. Let's see if I can one-handedly. So connect your little mini to this one. Make sure you hear it click and connect the other end over here to your USB port on the computer. Um, also, I have a connection to the other side of the computer USB to my VCM. I have a VCM in the data link connector and from there, you're going to go to the Ford PTS website. Try not to give out any personal information. Um, continue. So once you're at the PTS website, you'll go to Oasis. And everybody's updated to Windows 10 by now. Um, also, Ford updated their website a little bit. It works a little weird sometimes. You want to go to vehicle ID, and when you get to vehicle ID, the, the read VIN should be highlighted in green. If it's not highlighted in green, 
I don't know if you could tell that's green or not. If it's not highlighted in green, you want to go to the little device manager tab below that, click it. What this is going to do, it's going to have you actually pick which VCM you have, um, select VCM type, and in my case, I have the VCM2. Um, say yes, check, and it should go, and at that point, um, close it out, and you should be highlighted in green where you can retrieve the VIN um, through the web page. If that doesn't work, you can also, at the very bottom, you have the option to return to the old PTS page. Sometimes you can go there and everything will work. If you're having issues, you might try that. Anyway, so it's reading the VIN. It takes a little while. Now, you know, this is gonna be different. Okay, so once it retrieves the VIN, in this situation there is some codes in the system. I'm not worried about them at the moment. Um, I'm just going to close it, close the codes out, and then I'm going to hit go. And it's going to take off. Once the actual Oasis is up, you can see right here we have the VIN number. Um, try not to give away too much information, but see the recall. Sync with my touch, link in touch. Uh, 19K03 is the, what I'm getting ready to perform. Um, so from Oasis tab, bring the Oasis, scroll down to sync, and head on sync. Alright, so this is going to pull up a page that's going to show what system it is, um, or what when the last update was done on this. Last update on this was 10-20-2013, so yeah, this one definitely needs to be updated. There's been several updates out since then. Um, and this is going to be a lot different than if you were doing it at home. Um, when we do it at the Ford dealership, it actually flashes the APIM module firmware, and then it also updates the software. So from here, we go to the bottom, scroll down to the bottom of this, and you're going to keep it on standard, the standard tab. Um, there's a custom and there's also module replacement if if you load this and something doesn't load correctly you can go back into the custom tab and pick the actual thing like if 911 assist didn't load correctly or if the TDR VHR system didn't load correctly you can pick those individually and reload them also at this point you want to put your USB in your other USB port because it, it is going to want to download some stuff to that USB. At this point I have one cable going into the actual APIM module USB cable to the APIM, the one that goes to the USB hub. I have the VCM hooked up to the data link and I have my 8 gigabyte drive in the USB port on the computer. Um, if you notice, these things are checked. So you normally it pre-checks them for you, but if for some reason they're not pre-checked, you just want to verify. This is a navigation system. I have global navigation. I have the English language pack. I got the eight inch four graphics pack. I have emergency application, 91 assist, and the TDI VHR application. Those are all checked. Um, this is a navigation system system on a my touch. If it's a navigation system, it'll say insert SD card in the top right corner, or it'll say navigation there. Non-navigation systems will say information up in the right top corner. Um, so, as we proceed, scroll down. And you want to hit program sync. and wait okay so that will go through it'll do a couple things the screen will go blank um, it's going to come up and tell me to make sure the engine is started and running i always start this procedure with it running if it comes up telling me this i'll shut it off and i'll start it back up and click the okay allow engine to idle blah 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 
All right, so from here, it should start flashing the actual APIM module. Depending on your internet speed, um, this may take a little while. Uh, Ford recommends doing this while it's hardwired, um, but we have a pretty fast Wi-Fi, so we are doing this Wi-Fi. As you can see, the bar is loading, establishing communication with the CIP via the USB. And you just wait here for this bar to go across. And this does take a little while, so don't be in a hurry. Um, be careful with your cables, don't bump anything. All right, so it's going through, it's programming. This is where it's actually flashing the APIM module firmware. Um, sometimes you may get an Internet Explorer crash. If it does that, you need to restart the procedure. Um, pretty much you just need to hang tight and keep an eye on this. Make sure nothing sticks. Make sure nobody bumps your cables. Make sure nobody jumps in your car and moves it around. You definitely don't want to walk away and leave this doing this. It's better to stay with it. Um, especially if you run into issues screen will go blank it'll do a bunch of different stuff um, and it does take a little while with us being on Wi-Fi this probably the total procedure is going to take about 45 minutes um, sometimes going through this procedure when it flashes the APIM the engine will shut off just be sure to let it finish doing its thing and then restart it if needed you definitely want the engine running so the battery don't die and as you can see it will slowly go across there we're at about 29% 28% and it's still going but this is good or at least everything is actually working at this point point. and once again you know this is for pretty much Ford technicians I got a lot of guys in the shop wondering, you know, how to do this. So I told them I'm just going to make a video. Go watch my video. And any other Ford techs out there that are unfamiliar with this, you can watch this video. Okay, so this is about 10, 15 minutes later. Um, it's waiting for the APIM to reset. APIM went blank a couple times, popping back up. All right, so now this screen comes up. Um, it's going to be looking for your flash drive. My flash drive is in here. Now, note that my flash drive has already been loaded with the software. Um, if this is your first time, this will take a while. I'll give you in to show you what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm going to click flash drive. And as you can see, the bar will start going. See how it jumped right up to, I don't know, 75%, 85%. Um, the reason it did that is because I had the software on here already. If this was a fresh blank, freshly formatted soft, or the, if this was a freshly formatted USB flash drive, it would take much longer to load this software. So be ready for that. Once this is done, it's gonna stay, take the flash drive out and put it in the computer, or put it into the truck to the media hub, all right? Okay, so my flash drive is all loaded up. It's telling me to, you can safely, you can now safely remove the USB drive from the computer and take to the vehicle. So at this point, you need to install it into the media hub, but you still, you're going to have to re-disconnect your cable that you had um, connected to the media hub USB cable that goes to the APIM. So I need to disconnect and basically hook the media hub back up so that I could put the flash drive in it I will try to record this but as you can see I'm doing my own so try to disconnect plug it back into the media hub make sure it clicks it's a big thing with plugs if you're a Ford technician you're always listening for that click definitely want to hear that click Alright, put your cover back on. Alright, so I'm going to remove the flash drive from the computer. 
going to install it in the media hub. Once I do that, you'll notice. Okay, so with the media, with the USB plugged into the media hub, the sync screen changes to installing file, five of seven. Um, this is gonna take a little while. You wanna wait until this thing comes up telling you, you know, installation complete. Once installation is complete, you're gonna remove the USB from the media hub, put it back into the computer, and press the OK button, and that will upload the information to Ford, so that basically Ford knows what level this vehicle is at. Um, and then the next time you go to the Oasis tab, and you go to the sync, it'll show that this was installed on this date, which is 13120 and that's how they kind of keep track of it and if it is at its latest it'll usually show up in yellow stating that the system is up to date to the latest level and that there is no updates for it um, so make sure you do that and then there will be one more procedure at the very end of this that you're definitely going to want to do um, which is the touch screen calibration when you do this update to like a focus for some reason the screen orientation on focus is upside down so if you don't do the touch screen calibration um, the buttons will not work they'll be all screwed up you'll you'll click it up here at the top and it'll be down there um, you definitely need to do that screen calibration to make sure everything's gonna work correctly um, this procedure it'll hang right here on 7 of 7 for quite a, t quite a bit of time so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera um, and I'll show you when it pops back up. Okay, so we're still sitting here waiting. Um, installing file 7 of 7, it does take a little while. Um, with this being a navigation unit, it takes a little longer than, say, one without being navigation. Um, we're kind of hanging here on the 7 of 7. So just, this is normal. Just sit tight, it'll get there slowly but surely. And then obviously, you know, make sure that your screen doesn't time out. I go ahead and shut all that stuff off because sometimes this takes a while and you need it to be here on this screen waiting for you to put the USB back in the vehicle. So don't want your computer to time out. And you know, obviously, make sure your battery is good because it it's gonna take a while unless you're plugged in. And any time now, this thing should pop up showing installation finished. And then you want to put the USB back to the computer and click OK so that basically it can upload the information to Ford, and it also reconfigures the module and makes it work. It's a finalization procedure um, other than at the very end I did say at the very end you're gonna want to do the touch screen calibration and make sure that you do that for sure once it comes up completed you'll I'll show you where to find it it's at the very bottom and some people don't see it you may not notice it but it's there okay so here we go um, it came up on the screen installation is complete so you just want to leave that there don't you don't even need to say okay just go ahead and pull the USB out of the media hub pull your USB out of the media hub put it back into the computer give it a second so that it recognizes it and you want to click okay And hopefully the Internet Explorer don't crash and it actually proceeds with the installation. So now the virtual IDS will pop up. Also the screen will go blank. Basically it's going to reset and configure the module to work correctly as far as steering wheel controls, stuff like that. Waiting for APIM to reset. And 
the screen went blank and it'll come back up it's kind of meticulous but you just hang in there it will get there just be glad if nothing crashes and everything loads and make sure you don't have to restart the procedure we'll see Alright, so about the time the screen's ready to come back up, this will pop up as programming completed. My screen just came back up, and I have the programming has been completed. Alright, so now you want to do the touch screen calibration. If you notice, at the very bottom of this page is start touch screen calibration. Make sure you click that. Sorry for the blurriness, but you guys get the idea. So just touch screen calibration. You'll notice your VCM will click when it's kind of ready to do it. it. Takes a minute. It's a little bit slow. And what'll happen is the screen will go into touch screen calibration mode and you wanna walk it through that. And be sure that you push right perfectly on the little arrows so that you don't have to keep doing it. Alright, so I'm going to try to hold this and do this at the same time. There's one, two, three. If you don't touch it perfect, it'll restart it. Four. Alright, so this is where it gets a little bit confusing. It tells you new calibration setting have been measured. Press the enter key to accept the new settings. Press the escape key to keep the old settings. Well, I just usually tap it and it goes away and we're good. So that's it. Um, we're done. We will shut the vehicle off. Disconnect all your cables and then we'll do a quick test to make sure everything works. All right, so now it's time to give it a quick test. You know, all this information is in the shop manual under the 415 section um, under touchscreen, 8 inch touchscreen, my touch, programming, procedures. Um, so it is in there, but it is a little bit confusing. So, you, you know, this video is just going to be like a shortcut without going to the shop manual. But I do recommend you guys to go to the shop manual, search through the procedure, and kind of maybe put it together with this video, and it'll give you a better idea of what we're doing. So what I like to do is just make sure sync is responding to stuff. Um, I'll do... Please say a command. USB. Sorry, no USB device is currently connected. Alright, so the fact that it looked for USB, I told it USB, that's a good indication. I'll do maybe one other thing and just do like a FM radio. Um, you know, just try a different couple commands. If you want, hook your phone to it that's fine do some tests with your phone do a test call um, do advise the customer what I like to tell them is you know delete sync from your phone go in there if it's an iPhone forget this device uh, if it's an Android tell it unpair under the Bluetooth settings and then I like to hard reset the phone you know basically reboot the phone and then start a new connection hitting the add phone on the sync screen and 
Another thing to watch for, make sure that you have this icon right there for the 911 assist. Make sure that's there um, because I have had this not load for some reason or not load the VHR TDI application. Um, and if that's the case, you need to go back in, go under custom and pick the 911 assist application only and reload that. Um, sometimes it happens. It just depends. I've had some weird shit sometimes. Anyway, so we're good. Um, I'm going to tell a couple more things. Please say a command. Phone. No phones have been previously paired with sync. Please use the screen to pair a phone. Search for sync on your device. Please say a command. Cancel. Canceling. All right. Anyways, set your time. Should be fairly close. Um, also, if you have navigation, go to the navigation. Go out in an area where you can go drive around in a couple little slow circles. Make sure navigation picks it up, which it should without any issues. Um, and you're good to go. Search for sync on your device and select sync once it is found. And it's still trying to connect to a phone. So I'm going to do a phone connection just to verify operation. But that's it, guys. That's the new recall um, that you guys are going to need to be doing. So that's it, guys. That's the 19 ko 3 My Touch reprogramming procedure um, pretty much hands-on video reference I, I still believe you guys should look in the shop manual under programming um, under the 415 section radio entertainment stuff um, like I said it's just it is a little bit confusing at times mm -hmm.